We've been in the business seven years. Okay. We started out with another carrier, and about four years ago, uh, we became partners with Load One. Okay. And, uh, and you, has, you started as? Did you start as a driver? I started as owner? a driver. Yep. Okay. Yep. Shortly after I started, I contracted Lyme disease, okay. which is a very debilitating disease, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. took up seven months. Almost killed me. Almost killed me. So in the process, then I ended up with a truck that was empty, and so I thought, well, I better put a driver in it. So that's how we started out, and then from there we just got a, another truck here and there and put another driver in, and right. so we're growing. And you're, and you're running, uh, you said, uh, Ram Pro Masters? Ram Pro talking. Masters exclusively up until now. Okay. Oh, this is a Ford Transit Cutaway 350 HD is what the okay. model is. 178 inch wheelbase that's what they call a six wheeler which obviously means it has six tires six wheels well the idea is that no one out there that builds commercially available boxes makes a box that really is proper for expediting they're too tall they're too narrow they're too heavy they're just too something right. and a lot of something really um, so we wanted to build a very very lightweight box so it had to be all aluminum we wanted to expand the envelope, so instead of uh, three skids, which is about the most you can get on a non-DOT regulated vehicle up until now, we wanted to make sure we could get more than that, and we targeted six skids, which is what this one is. And so um, there were certain dimensions that we had to achieve for length and width. And then the height was somewhat arbitrary, but we looked at what kind of loads we were hauling in our Pro Masters and decided that 69 inches was a good upper limit for the height. Okay. Um, most of the wind, when a vehicle goes through the wind, most of the air goes over the top of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so that's where your wind resistance really is most. So the taller you make your vehicle, the worse your mile per gallons are. Sure, sure. So, we wanted to make it as short as we could in overall height. We also didn't want to stick anything on top of it like a roof air conditioner or anything like that. Nor do we have any holes in the roof. It's totally seamless aluminum from one end to the other. Sleeper compartment, you bet. We wouldn't we firmly believe that we wouldn't build a truck that we wouldn't drive ourselves. Okay. And most of the expediters out there do not have windows in the side. They don't have screens. Things come in in the middle of the night and bite them, and they get up in the morning with a rash on their leg. You know, we felt really we wanted to have screens on there. We wanted to have power ventilation. So there's a vent, a roof vent, directly over the bunk that the driver can reach up and adjust in the middle of the night, on, off, high, low. Uh, the windows are crank outs, but they don't crank out so far, so you can't get any any rain in the side windows. Even a pretty good driving rainstorm. Right. So they've got. You know, ventilation regardless of the weather, really. Yeah. It's difficult in your average van because most of them don't have don't have windows. Very few of them have proper ventilation. The vehicle is rated, total weight rated at 9,950. Okay. It weighs about 5,700 pounds the way you see it. So with a driver, it can carry 4,000 or a little bit less than that. Right. That, that kind of matches up with what you guys haul. Um, it's actually a little more than the average when you talk about sprinter class. Okay. It's towards the heavy side, but because we can carry more skids, we also wanted to maximize the weight. Volume, yeah. And so the box is completely alone, and every structural member is sized to be strong enough, but not over-designed. So we didn't want to just have extra weight coming along for the ride that would reduce our carrying capacity. Sure, sure. Now, how uh, the expertise to be able to do something like this? Do you guys do a lot of the work on this yourself? Where, does that, where does that come from? We did all the work. Okay. Engineering is really my background. Okay. And then from there, if you're an engineer and you're a hands on engineer, you get a lot of experience, a lot of things. I've been yeah. in woodworking shops, uh, fine furniture shops, I've been in metal shops, and uh, you know, basically involved with all that. And when it came to aluminum, my friend is a, a career welder guy, and uh, so he guided me into welding. When we first got started on this, I decided we had to do our own welding to make it affordable. So sure. we've got a couple of welders now, and uh, and we do all of our own welding, all our own fabrication, 100% of it in our shop. Right. And you're going forward with this design on some new units, right? Absolutely. We have another one in the shop right now that's about halfway done, okay. and then we have four more on order. So, uh, uh, and load one, as far as I can tell, they love the look and the idea, and so 
I believe that they'll all be going on with Load 1 because sure. we're exclusive with Load 1 at this point.